Hey, what's up guys? It's Mongoose with another little tutorial video here. Um, I recently purchased, or recently received, a um, the Tipman TCR valve assembly for my Tipman TIPX that I had ordered from TipmanParts.com. Um, basically, the problem that I was having with running HPA through a remote line on my TIPX marker was that I was having trouble getting my marker up to even reach 280 feet per second, which is the field limit um, where I normally play. Uh, I was on the TIPX owners group on Facebook and I saw a lot of people mentioning that you could get the TCR internals and just drop them into the marker and then it would help solve those problems because the TCR um, valve assembly is built for HPA. So I thought I'd give that a little test out. Uh, you can see them side by side here. This is the original TIPX valve here on the left and uh, this is the TCR valve assembly and as you can see just from looking at them on the outside there's really no difference in appearance between the two um, but the main difference is that the TCR valve is actually built to run on HPA better than the TIPX valve. The TIPX you know, obviously runs on the CO2 cartridges and then the remote line function is just kind of like an afterthought um, and I think that Tipman usually just assumed that people were going to run a remote line with CO2 versus HPA. Um, and a lot of people were saying, well, you have to get a higher output regulator for your tank um, to get this the FPS high enough and things like that. But then yeah, I started seeing comments about the TCR valve. So it's only a $70 part if you buy one from the TipmanParts.com website. So um, I'll show you the difference here. Unscrew the bolt guide here from the TCR valve assembly and this is the TIPX valve assembly. So if you take a look on the inside I don't know if you can see it that well but there are these small circular openings inside the valve system which is where the gas comes in so CO2 or HPA comes through those holes um, and then it you know shoots out the front of the bolt guide to propel the ball forward and then there's this middle piston here and for the middle piston in the TIPX valve it's just a cylindrical piston that moves back and forth so there's a little o-ring on there and this moves back and forth um, to to basically move the inner workings of the valve assembly with the TCR internals you see that there are three oval shaped openings on the inside of this thing that allow for more airflow for HPA and then the piston on the inside isn't just cylindrical, it actually has a uh, tapered neck down below the blunt part of the cylinder here that basically is makes it a little bit lighter. So that internal mechanism is just a little bit lighter, requires a little bit less pressure to actually move it around. So those are kind of the principles behind why one is a little bit better for HPA versus the other which is built more for CO2. Um, the bolt guides themselves are pretty much identical, um, so I could just basically stick my TIPX bolt guide back onto the TCR valve assembly and there'd be no difference. The, the bolt um, will still be my stock bolt for the TIPX, um, so really there's no difference there. Uh, since my bolt guide is already a little bit lubricated, I'd just as soon screw that onto the TCR valve assembly. Um, actually, you know what? Just for the sake of safety, I don't know if things are different diameters or whatever, so I'll just leave it with its own bolt guide. And you just need a half inch wrench to tighten that back up. There are little grooves on the bolt guide. You just don't want to crank on it because you don't want to mar the surface of that uh, bolt guide. And it should just be, you know, finger tight, just just with tension. You don't need to crank that down. It was difficult to get that off at first. There was no lubrication on the O-ring. Um, that seals the top of this on here. There was also no lubrication on the O-ring of the cylinder piston that's inside, or of the, the blunt head piston that was inside of the valve assembly. I don't know if that's the technical term for it or not, but that's kind of what I'm calling it. So I have this, uh, I have my, T, my TIPX body here. Um, so I'll reassemble this, uh, maybe do, if I can figure out how to do the, the fast forward function on, um, my editing software, I'll do that. I'm just going to put a little bit of grease on the bolt guide itself. 
I normally do that when I clean my TIPX. Not too much. And then put the stock bolt and you know, sure enough that moves freely. There's no wiggle. Doesn't feel any different than the stock TIPX bolt guide. So I think we're pretty safe there. Okay, so for reassembly now. marker is reassembled. Um, I'll probably just air it up just to make sure that everything still works, that there's no leaks or anything like that with the new valve assembly. Uh, make sure that it actually fires, do a couple dry fire shots. But other than that, it's a really simple modification that you can do to the marker. Pretty inexpensive, uh, cheaper than having to buy a new tank or uh, messing around with replacing a regulator or removing burst discs or anything like that if you're not familiar with how tank regulators work. So, uh, if you're interested in this, I'll put some links in the description of the video to show you where you can get the part and how you can um, order it, what the part number is. Very easy, very simple, um, great fix for a pretty common problem with this particular marker. So, until the next time, this is Mongoose, and I hope to see you guys on the field.